Hi everyone and welcome back. Those of you new to the channel, I'm Teresa Perrin and today I want to discuss with you GME. Guys, they had earnings and they blew it away, thankfully. So things are looking on the upside. In my process of evaluating where GME stands and looking at the information given to us from Fintel, I couldn't believe what I stumbled upon and wait until you hear it. Anyways, let's get started and nothing I say is financial advice. Always do your own DD. Thank you so much. If you could hit the like button, I'd greatly appreciate it. Let's get into it. I'm sure that many of you are aware that GameStop is ripping to the upside in the after hours after reporting quarter two earnings. And the reason for that is because their second quarter net sales of 1.136 billion was slightly down from last year's 1.183 billion. But the revenue came in just sly of the street's estimate of 1.27 billion. So it was pretty close guys, but the best part about the earnings was that they reported a loss of 35 cents per share, which beat expectations of a loss of 38 cents per share. And GameStop highlighted the sale of 223.2 million from its collectibles category, which they said they intend to grow over the long term, which beat the prior year's second quarter sales of 177.2 million. So guys, that was approximately $26 million more in that category, which is huge. They're going to focus on cost cutting and their general and administrative expenses declined 14.3% from the first quarter for a total of 387.5 million into the second quarter, guys. So they're showing that they're managing their cash better. Um, they ended the quarter with cash and cash equivalents of 908.9 million, and they have no debt outside of an unsecured term loan related to the COVID-19 pandemic. So guys, things are looking up for your positions in GameStop and shorts are not looking too good on this news. In addition to that, they announced a partnership with FTX, um, during which the terms of the partnership, GameStop will be FTX preferred retail partner in the United States. They didn't disclose what the terms were, but guys, this is both bullish for GME and FTX because GameStop will be carrying FTX gift cards in select stores. Now let's get into a little bit about the chart and then I'm going to tell you what I find so bullish because guys, there's great news for us. All right, I'm just going to do a quick review for people who are unfamiliar with what the float and stuff is. So the free float is 256.93 million and guys, they had a volume today of 12.05 million, which was higher than its average volume over the past three months of 9.33 million. The turnover on this stock is extremely low. It's only 3.96%. So this just proves the fact that, you know, we're hodlers. People that own GME do not sell their GME. We just hold and buy more. And this is proof. Very few people are just trading it, guys. If anything, I would say that it's probably the institutions primarily that are trading amongst each other. Um, there is a 52-week low of $19.40 and a 52-week high of $63.92. So taking a look at the one-year chart, as you can see, the area that we're in right now, I'm shocked that when we came down, if you were to draw like a triangle here from what you see, we should have broke out where you first see this run at the bottom of the triangle, but it pulled back down and it's just been consolidating guys. And I'm going to pull it up closer to show you this move down looks extremely artificial. I mean, this is a short ladder attack like no other. And guys, one bullish day out of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Out of 17 days, there's been one green candlestick. Come on now. That's absolutely a bunch of BS and you and I both know it, but they just dug themselves a deeper hole and here is what I'm so bullish about. So the short interest of the free float is 21%. Now remember, this is self-reported. So this is, you know, not counting any naked shares or whatever other speculative plays that people believe exist. But 
this is just based on what is reported. 21% short interest, guys, and 10.35 days to cover. That's absolutely insane. I don't think I've ever seen it this high, at least not recently, that's for sure. 10.35 days. If they were to start to try to cover their shorts, guys, we'd be ripping for days. That is just amazing, and I can't wait till that starts happening. The off-exchange short volume is 55.61%, so that's the amount traded in the dark pool. Currently, guys, this is another great part. There's zero shares available to borrow. Now, not to be a party pooper or anything, but we all know how the F3 override key works, and um, there's been zero shares left to borrow every night in AMC that I've checked it for the past couple of weeks, and guess what, guys? Every day, shares suddenly turn up. So let's hope there truly is zero shares and that they're not going to be F3 overriding this any more than they already have. Uh, the cost to borrow is currently only at 10.57%. I'd like to see that start to move to the upside and the short volume ratio, guys, is actually today was lower than normal. As you can see, every day it's like 60 to almost 70 percent. Look at this high of 69.33. Will today be in earnings? I guess they behave themselves a little bit more than normal because the short volume ratio was only 55.61 percent. And I say that only like kidding because this is absolutely disgusting and the fact that the SEC allows us and Gary Gensler doesn't do his job because clearly anyone doing their job would never allow for this to happen. It just disgusts me but that's again a topic for a whole other conversation. So let's look at the failure to deliver is because with no shares left to borrow tomorrow they need to come up with 176,124 and on Thursday they need to come up with 328,412. Now guys if you want to know why they choose to fail to deliver these it may not just be that they can't get the shares Look at the price when they failed to deliver. These were shares were at $37.93 for tomorrow, $38.36, $40, $43, going into next week, $40, $39. So they're purposely, in my opinion, choosing not to deliver these shares because they know they're going to go on a short attack, drive the price down, take all this money as profit because they're going to give you the shares that they buy back at a lower price. It's just disgusting. They shouldn't be able to sell shares that don't exist. But again, let's not get too far carried away with ourselves. At any rate, we're up a couple dollars in the after hours and I'm extremely bullish going into tomorrow, guys, because I think that we should continue with this nice uptrend. Earnings was very bullish and I think you know, shorts really need to start thinking about closing out that position. I mean, if they keep going much longer, it's already 10 days to cover. That's two days. I mean, two weeks worth of trading days. Two weeks. What are they going to make it a third? Time will tell. We'll see. But guys, thank you so much for watching. I appreciate each and every one of you and have a wonderful night.